I'm Mark Kelly, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'm here at Cairns Marine in Australia to talk to you about one of the most misunderstood topics in the saltwater tank hobby, fishing coral acclimation. Now I'm not going to do all the talking, I'm going to turn it over to a professional aquarist with 29 years of experience under her belt, Ms. Laura Simmons. Laura, there's floating your fish, there's drip acclimating your fish, there's dumping them straight into your tank. What's the right way for us to acclimate our fish and our coral? Definitely not dumping them into your tank. I can say that hands down. It doesn't matter where you buy them, when you buy them, anything that you know about your tank. Don't ever just take an animal out of the bag and dump it in. It is the worst possible thing you can do for your animal and for your habitat. You know, if your coral dies in three days, it could be from a very gnarly acclimation. It takes that much time for their skin to finally uh, react and start peeling or start sloughing worse or deciding not to feed or if those anthelae died um, and or shunted out of the coral uh, flesh, then that's a big deal. That's a really big issue. I'm a big believer in acclimation. Um, I, it's tried and true and perfected over 29 years of working with aquatic animals. You need to make sure that you're protecting your animals. You're going to all this money, expense, time, effort, and passion about your aquarium in order to get a new animal into it, why would you just dump it in and hope for the best? You also don't shock an animal with light. They've been stuck in a bag in a box right. in the black dark for a very long time, and the last thing you want to do is go, oh, look at that, and start picking it up and getting the picture to show your friend. Don't do that. Okay. Leave your animals alone for a little bit. Get excited but get excited about setting them up for success. You set yourself up for success by doing it. Know the water parameters that your animal's coming from. So if you're at your LFS, which is great, that means your transport's probably gonna be very short, but if you're at your LFS, if they can't tell you the water parameters that they're packing your animal in, then you need to test pH, temperature, salinity. Then make sure you know your system's pH, temperature, and salinity. By doing this, you can see how closely matched they are. And it's as simple as trying to slowly match them together. If they're incredibly close together, do an acclimation just for the sake of not knowing the other parameters. Don't just assume if those three parameters match, everything else is groovy. So what you wanna do is then try to match them. If they're very far apart, it should take you longer. You can drip, you can float, you can do it a wide variety of ways. So what's far off in terms of pH and salinity and temp? That's the key. How, what is your pH in your home aquarium? It hangs down around 8.1. 8.1, that's a good parameter. That's really good for a lot of fish, great for a lot of corals. So knowing that, if you started at 7.8, you only really need to do a quick acclimation. You could probably get away with half an hour to an hour um, at the most, but you're gonna base it on as it changes. You'll keep doing tests, you'll keep looking at it. I'm a big believer in pH pens. We've got a multi-million dollar facility and we have pH pens all over the shop. Nice. And by using that pH pen, you can constantly just check your pH in the bag. But the lower, the slower. That's my theory, the lower, the slower. So basically, if it's super low, you go super slowly, maybe changing the pH by 0.1 or 0.2 every 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Good rule of thumb, I think. Then, as it approaches seven, you can create, you can increase it a little bit. Okay. So the higher it gets, you can start changing more rapidly, and it depends on also your temperature. What's your temperature in your tank? Uh, it hangs down around 78 degrees. Fair okay, high. so if it's 78, but all of a sudden somehow you accidentally drove home Arctic winter temperatures, something like that, your temperature is super low, then you're acclimating specifically for your temperature. Uh, salinity, what's the salinity of your, of your aquarium? 1.025, 35 parts per trillion. All right, so if it's going from a salinity of only 30, that's a very important parameter to take care of because Going from a lower salinity to a higher salinity is way more stressful for a fish than going from a high salinity to a low salinity. Right, sure. And with your coral, your corals are coming from a habitat where they've been stabilized and they've been comfortable. And when you move them to a new environment, you don't want them to stress and slough a lot. You know, they get that really sloppy, sloppy look about them. By doing that, that's a stressor as well. And that mucus layer that gets on them, it changes their uptake of oxygen. It can kill off some of your zoosanthales, so it might alter the color of your animals. 
And you're okay with drip acclimating or taking a little cup of water and yeah. putting it in every five minutes, sure. as long as it's slow. Yep. Okay. I'm happy with any of those methods. I'm happy with floating and taking a little cup and pouring a little bit in. Well, one thing people always say is, you don't want to put an air stone in the bag immediately because you'll make the ammonia toxic. That's right. Okay. It can be. If your shipper is actually putting an ammonia blocker in the water, that's a good thing. You're never acclimating about ammonia. Right. You know you're trying to get them out of ammonia or nitrite and then into a good, nice, healthy tank, but not as quickly as possible. You want to do it slowly. Slow and steady wins the race, and that causes the least amount of reaction for your animal. So can I pour in ammonia locker into the bag, small I, amount? I'm not a big believer in chemical uh, alteration of the water that the animal arrived in okay. because it's too tricky. Uh, if you're messing around with the ammonia and trying to fix that ammonia, if it's not already fixed, and when I mean that I'm saying blocked up right. to prevent it from becoming toxic, if it's not already, you can be playing a little bit of um, a chemical game and ammonia blocker can do other things to your water. It can alter your alkalinity, it can alter your pH. You really don't want to muck around with it. And now is it, are you happier if a fish is laying on its side, being still, not breathing heavily where we feel like it's distressed as opposed to thrashing around or acting erratic? Yeah, it, it, your fish shouldn't be thrashing around and acting erratic. If your animal is floating and you're going, oh my gosh, I've got a triage, I've got to do this, don't. If your animal comes in struggling, the last thing you want to do is go, I'll just plop them in the tank. Don't do that because you could push it over the edge from the initial stress that it's already had from transit. I've got my parameters closed. The fish looks happy. Yes. What's the best way to get them from the bucket or the bag into your tank? I use what we used to call med cups. They're a small sort of, um, you know, maybe liter sized container. and. I gently pour my fish in, or I'll even submerge it and let them swim out. Do you like acclimation boxes so the fish can look around at his new buddies? I, I think they're a really good idea. We used to call them howdy cages. Howdy when I was, cages. Yeah, howdy cage, because you're like, howdy, here's your new friend. So we like howdy cages, and that's an excellent idea, because um, when your fish is first coming out of its bag, even if it's been acclimated, it smells different. And the first thing the other fish are going to do is go, yay, ammonia. Cortisol, they're gonna smell all these hormones and all this freaky new fish smell. They're, they're gonna love it. And all they're gonna to wanna to do is go and, and check it out. And your sleepy, little, tired, poor animal that's been traveling all this time isn't gonna to wanna to be harassed. So give them some space. And I promise you, you do this, guaranteed. In 24 hours or less, your fish will be bright, shiny, and eating. Ready to go. If you do it right. And if it was packed well. And if we're getting it from a good supplier and a great fishery. That's right. It's really, really important to trust your supply chains, trust your supplier, understand that they know the professional way to handle your animals. And of course, always quarantine your animals. Yes. Yes. Always quarantine your animals.